Hi, and welcome to Board Game Dad. My name is Ben Knuckles, and in this video we're going to learn the one to four player game, How to Drive a Car, designed by engineers and produced by the Department of Motor Vehicles. How to Drive a Car is a semi-cooperative game, wherein players will traverse tiles to get from their point of origin to their destination by taking turns controlling a private vehicle or car. In a car, players will encounter road conditions, navigate signs and signals, and manage the ever-shifting dynamic between physical needs and emotional moods. Players win together whenever the car reaches its destination, but if at any point the car goes off the road or becomes a heaping ball of flames, all players lose. So grab your keys and let's learn to drive a car. As stated earlier, the objective of the game is to get from your origin to your destination. To set up, park the car in the middle of a parking space with the doors accessible to all players. In the corner of the car is a space for gas tokens. You'll need to fill this section of the car with tokens before you can play. Tokens are not included in the box, but can be purchased at a local gas store. Alternatively, you can buy the Deluxe Edition, which includes the Electric Expansion. We've used the Deluxe version in this video. The game is played over a course of one or more rounds or driving shifts. To determine the start player, ask each player how long it's been since their last alcoholic beverage. The person for whom the most time has passed since their last drink is the start player. In the case of a tie, choose a person who last won the game. If there's still a tie, you can choose the start player randomly, although players are advised against letting anyone who has ever lost a game from being the start player. In fact, if a player has ever lost at driving a car, players are advised against letting this person ever take a turn. Ever. Give the start player the keys and steering wheel. Henceforth, until the round is over, this player will be known as the driver. Other players may sit behind, orthogonally, or diagonally adjacent to the driver's right, but never to the driver's left. In Japanese and British editions of the game, these rules are reversed, with players sitting on the driver's left, but never the driver's right. In every edition of the game, sitting in front of the driver is not allowed. During a shift, the driver may choose from an unlimited number of these three types of actions. The first action is move. This is primarily how the car will get from the origin to the destination. A driver may choose to move forward, left, right, or even backwards, although it should be noted that moving backwards can be counterproductive and should be only used strategically. During the course of movement, players will gradually move the car from one tile to another tile. One element of replayability is that the movement rules are different on each tile. The movement rules can be complex and won't be covered in this video, but an appendix can be found online. Search for the name found in the center of the tile and the keyword driver's manual for a full list of all movement rules. While moving, there are several additional actions a player can take for free. These include turning on the radio or the AC. These actions are not necessary to achieve victory, but they do earn the driver popularity points, which increases their chances of being the driver for more and more rounds. The next action a player may take is the detect danger action. When detecting danger, the player must exchange an alert token from their personal supply, we'll talk more about alert tokens in a minute, in order to reveal cards from one or more hazard decks. The road conditions deck will tell you if inclement weather or construction is affecting the road before you. The defensive driving deck reveals subtle hints about drivers around you that may result in a crash and trigger the end of the game with a loss. The navigation deck reveals indicators along the route that may alert you to the need to temporarily halt movement. Sometimes cards in the navigation deck reveal good things, such as bonuses you can pick up later in the game. The third action available to the driver is to pull over. When pulling over, progress through tiles is halted, but the driver may then perform additional actions for free. The exact list on these actions can be found when revealing navigation cards, but they may include texting on your phone, scoring food tokens, dropping off waste tokens, and most importantly, acquiring more alert tokens. Lastly, during a pullover, the driver may choose to pass off the keys to the next player in turn order. You'll like driving a car if you enjoy action-packed games with a fast pace, a degree of luck, and a great deal of strategic and tactical decision-making. For people who want a more relaxed game with a slower pace, less luck, and less rules, I recommend taking the bus or walking. This has been Board Game Dad with your host, Ben Knuckles. To buy board game merchandise like this shirt, check out theperfectboardgame.myshopify.com or check the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and drive safely.